to have company. It's like the number one thing I keep thinking about yoga. It's like one of the things I love is the interaction with having people here. It's like, like for me sitting in a studio and teaching classes to a camera, oh, what's the point? I'm sure there's a point, but for me it feels less less uh, important because there's something, you know, like there is, like as a teacher, there's so much learning that happens when you're watching somebody else figure something out or, or struggle with something or get it. It's like all those little connections, you know, start to happen. It happens all the time when I, if I have a, a conversation about something I'm teaching with someone and they're kind of response about what happened and why it happened <clears throat> makes me think about it even more. And that's very much, at least the way I was taught yoga and yoga philosophy, it's, very, it's all about this idea of more. You know, it's not telling you that this is the way to think, it's giving you more ways to think. It's literally training you to be able to think about things from different vantage points. It's this invitation to more in the world. So, you know, and a lot, you know, every, a lot of people ask questions like this, like, what am I supposed to feel in a pose? You know, all of these, like, they want you as the teacher to, like, give it to you. Like, what is supposed to happen? Where am I doing this? And just that mindset can be kind of blocking. And the big revelation I know I've, I've had, you know, through practice and the way that I was taught, my teacher was so intense about um, that you had to really make this your own. That even like the stories and the teachings, and we're talking about philosophy. This is not a guy who teaches asana at all. But, um, you know, it was so much about like giving it to you in a way that you could then digest it, go home, think about it, and come back. And when you do think about yoga poses, when I come onto the mat and still practice these same yoga poses, it's like the same idea. It's to be able to start to feel things differently and over the years talk about what the actions may be a little differently. And if you've, I know some of you, like you ask me questions about a specific detail or an alignment part and I give you the frustrating response of like these contrasting answers. Like it can be this, but you could also do this in a different scenario. And that's kind of the fun, like to be overwhelmed, to have too much information, you're empowered to start to use it and learn and work with it. So, especially nice having students like you, that guys have been with me for a while and know this stuff and are super interested. So, anyway, sit up tall, close your eyes. But it's a good reminder, for, even for myself, to know that, that yoga is that invitation to enrich everything about you, to, do, to see the world in more of the myriad of color and diversity that's out there. To be able to step on your mat and do these poses and be invited into a different experience, nuances, each and every time. So every time you sit down to get going here, like take a moment, let your breath start to move the way it wants to, Settle. So before you start really manipulating and moving the breath, you give yourself the moment to check in and just notice how it feels. Notice what's going on. Sitting up as tall as you can, but without that posture creating too much tension, soften, try to relax. And then to the center of your heart, bring your hands together. And join me as we sing. So three ohms, one round of the invocation. And an ohm at the end.
into your heart, you can bow. And then uh, release your hands, open your eyes. All fours, please. And so working your hands like we normally do, spread your fingers wide. Let's turn this way. Just take the time to expand. It's the series of those principles of engage and draw the, the tension up the arms, but you can facial expression changes, it's too much. And so when you get going, you're kind of dialing up the intensity. And it'll feel more effortful in the beginning as you get you know, further and you get warmed up, maybe the effort this is a little less, at least the perception of it. So you're moving, you can start changing the hand positions, turning the hands out, turning the hands in, onto the back of your hands, you know, just work through all that stuff. Even that, like that's, and you find something that's kind of uncomfortable, that sensation. I sure know when I was new to yoga, it's like, ow, it hurts. And that's all you can, that's all you can really, you know, relate to it or, or refer it. And then the more you do this, you can start to, you know, isolate things more, feel things beyond just that initial, like, discomfort of the stretch. And it absolutely takes time to develop all that. And then back of the hands to the floor. Push down. You can even shift back a little bit. Good. And then you can give your hands a little shake out before you do your first down dog. Take your time to find. Keeping your breath, letting your breath be just such a signal to remain calmer, to not over effort, but at the same time moving the breath is like, it's also not laziness, it's, it's that midpoint of the effort to keep it moving, to keep some action, but to attenuate that so it's not so intense. Head forward to plank pose, keeping your fingers active, pushing the ground away. Watches are not great for yoga. And then lift your hips, go back to down dog. To get back to down dog, without you're giving a little movement towards your hands and trying to lift your hips up high. Do it again, go forward, roll all the way towards that plank, pressing down, reaching through the crown of your head, long neck, and then lift your hips, push the mat away, go back to down dog. Last time forward, and this time bend the elbows and lower slowly all the way down. Good, point your toes. Lift your chest, little cobra pose. And yeah, you can do these little gentle movements in your upper body. Keep the legs heavy, the, even the toes pretty connected to your mat. And then back to down dog. And play. And where that, if you lift you know, higher, you're going to hit those inner thighs. If you go a little bit lower, and you kick, it'll be easier to kick back. It should be. 
and you'll be able to get some hip flexor and some hip extension stretch. And then bring it forward, lunge. Like I'm always fond of, especially like it feels good to start with certain poses in your body. And it is kind of like a checking in when I do this. It's like I want to feel things that I may not have felt. Feel the ground with your feet. Let your weight settle enough so you, you're steady there, you're, you're heavy. And then tall through the chest, reach the arms up over your head. And even if you change your eye position, you can look up a little bit, but notice if that affects anything else. And so make changes just slowly enough that you still feel nice and heavy and connected. Stretch down through the legs, reach the arms up even taller, and then back to down dog. Take the left leg to the sky. So bend the knee and open it up. So you can go higher, you can go lower. You're really playing around. Remember, like there's definitely like tools and techniques and things I can teach you and kind of point you at. But it's the work you do that's going to connect all those dots. Step forward, lunge, and come on up. Good. Whenever you're ready, you can take the arms to the sky, but heavy in, t in the feet, not overworking quite yet. If stability is a little bit of an issue, hug your legs towards each other, like you're, you're drawing the inner thighs together, like you're hugging your outer hips together, and that stability. Down even more to reach up even taller. Good, take a nice big breath and go back, downward dog. Awesome. And then from there, head forward to plank pose, the top of a push-up, lower all the way down. And again, cobra or up dog, anchor your feet, lift your chest. And then down dog. Bend the knees, walk or jump to the front of your mat and then fold. That part heavier and then you can, it'll afford you the ability to relax a little more in the upper body to kind of let the weight of your body draw you deeper into this. Take your right hand the outside of your shin, just slide your torso across your leg. Just with the leg, keep the thighs back. And then other side, just a really gentle thing. The legs are still, and you take your torso and slip. There. And then back to center. Hands to hips, lift your chest. Come all the way up. Good. And then pressing your feet down, reach up tall to the sky. Interlace your fingers, palms up. And stretch. You can do that. Just kind of moving without the hips shifting around at all. So you kind of do like shoulder, shoulder. And then you can kind of start to lean more into it. And eventually it's all hips to initiate, and it'll basically kind of move you deeper down, starting in your shoulder and down into your hip area. Even sometimes you'll get it, you may feel it lower than your, like your outer thighs. Good. Just kind of getting things going. Good, and then release your hands, bend your knees, sit back into a squat. I love when like teach students are in teacher training and they'll, they'll be like, well, you don't teach, do warm-ups in class. I look at them like, I don't? Like, I think I do warm-up. This is more warming up. You know, but it's like, yeah, I don't like go neck, let's do neck rolls. Like, no, no, no. I think that's less useful. Push your toes down, take your hips back, and lift your chest. It's like warming up in the, it's the, you know, I don't your toes pushing down, can you feel the hips driving back, your hamstrings toning? 
and then you make the pose progressively more challenging as you wish, arms could come off or go over your head. But yeah, warm up to me is that like getting your brain and your body and all of that stuff working together. Your mind, instead of thinking about work or whatever else, you get to go right into what you're doing and like all the nuance and challenge that's there. Exhale, bow forward, touch the floor. Take the right arm up to the sky and twist. Left hand stays down. Your knees are going to, your, at least your, your left knee will bend initially. Roll your chest open and start by taking your bottom shoulder back a little more. And then really letting the top, take the top shoulder back. Imagine you're looking up more with the center of your chest, less with your eyes. Let the heart really open so you extend the spine longer. Great. Take the hand to the floor, switch. Left arm up. So this ten so you look more, you can look with your eyes more to the front of the room, and that should also lengthen you. Or you imagine right in the center of your chest is what's where your eyes are. Great. Touch the floor. Step back to downward dog. And then take the right. I'll try to keep it really straight. Straight will mean your quad is squeezing in that top leg, the, the front of your thigh. And then take it up like really, really, really high. And then pump. You can keep your legs wide or go wide. Do a few of those. You can go all the way up strong. Release it and push back. So you're using like tone the calf. When you come up, using your calf muscle. And then as you release, push and drive back. Right foot forward. Come on up. And then arms can go up to the sky. So it actually would help if we did that. That back leg, like I feel my calf now, and it'll, it'll help when it's the front leg too, because it's those muscles that help to do the work in the feet. Take the arms up nice and tall, press the front heel down, reach through your back leg long and strong. And then you're welcome to open taller or even start to lean further back towards a back bend. Bring the hands to the mat. Downward dog. Plank pose if you want it. Try to go. Time you lower down slowly. And then cobra pose. Good. And then. Take your left leg up to the sky. Open it up. So the straighter you keep it, it's just you're helping to keep tension on the legs. Then the bottom. Then through your legs. Even use your arms to help. Do a few. So I tell you that practice, you can maybe try to feel that in. Like that's one your attention to try to get a little more out of it. Swing the left leg all the way forward, lunge and come up. Good. And bring more breath into the way you perform the pose. Bring more softness and space into the places that may get tensed up. When you lean back, you know, through that mid or even your low back, see if you can breathe like you're puffing that space up, that you're not forcing the movement. And then just holding and taking your time. One big inhale. Oh, nice. And then back to down dog. Inhale to the top of a push-up plank pose. Lower down. Cobra or up dog. Good. And then back to down dog.
Good. So from here, so Carl, lift your right leg up. Keep it. Keep the knee and the toes pointing down to the floor. And think about together, so that it's you know less about muscles to try to actually get your inner thighs to tone and really all of the muscles in your legs to do a little bit more. See if you can then come up onto your fingertips in your left hand. So opposite hand, yeah. And then and if you want to make it hard, fingertip. And then maybe you even try to pull the hand off the floor. Like it's one of those wacky things, and like all the, the weird distortions that may happen, kind of learning what's, what tends to, to be the pattern. All right, let's do the other side. So bring that foot down, take your left leg up. So keeping the knee and the toes pointing down, if you're not trying to lift the hip that high or the leg that high, because that keeps your hips more square. So then, you, you know, find the tone, that hugging to the midline, fingertips in the right hand, and if that, if you feel solid there, then like little by little progress it. Like make it hard on yourself. One finger, like hold it, hold that really high standard for the movement. And maybe the hand can come off the mat. Because really, it's like quality even in when you're far away from doing like the full thing. That's how you build that stuff. Good, awesome. Hands to the floor, plank pose. And then all the way down to your belly. Good. Take the arms out by the sides, or if you want even harder, over your head, palms can face forward. Push your legs down, lift up, and try to lift the shoulder faster than the hand wants to go up. As you exhale, release back down. And we'll do a few of these. So with the goal to be that strong contraction at the top. And when you can come down, you know, put your head down, rest for a second. Each time you come up, the idea is just to learn how the back muscles are involved in this. And you know, pulsing it like that, trying to get to the top, trying to like maybe even like pulse while you're near the top. You're, you're, you're so, for a lot of us, it's like, it's less about like the shape you see and trying to force yourself into the shape you see, but rather for me, it's like figuring out what is doing this and what in the body are we trying to train and, and, and balance. Because like, yeah, like yoga poses are less important than like a really healthy body and system. All right, bring your hands to the floor, head back to down dog. And then take your right leg up to the sky, warrior two, step that foot forward and come on up. So sit up, your ankle, back leg strong, and then straighten your leg a little bit. I mean, you can straighten it all the way, but then the idea is to feel which leg has more weight. Probably your front leg. Can you back? So your glutes, the back leg muscles are a little stronger. And then re-bend into your front leg and see if you can keep the balance between the feet. You can do this a few times. But the idea is it's learning how to wake up and hold that in the back leg. Wake up the back leg muscles, keep them doing their job. So the front leg is, you know, the effort is less there. The intensity is probably a lot more. You're, you're, you'll feel the stretch, but make the, at your effort in the back of the ground to make the arch of the foot, the ankle lift, and then lean back, push down so much through your legs, the spine gets taller, longer, good, and then go back to warrior two, interlace your hands behind you, move your hips back, and start to bow forward. And here's where, keep the back leg working. Push down with your legs so much your hips actually lift more. And let go into your front hip to get, you know, like to work into that stretch, to work deeper into the hip joint. 
Yeah, and breathe in a way that keeps your face soft, that keeps you more relaxed, and helps to keep you focused on what you're doing. Like, focused even when your brain goes, I don't like, I'm, you know, enough, ouch. Like, you can obviously come out, but like, you, you're waiting, you're just kind of like playing that little bit of edge of discomfort. All right, lift your chest, come on back up, warrior two. And then straighten your front leg, go triangle pose, tight legs, hinge down taking the right hand to the floor or to your leg or a block. You guys know the drill. So even if you could touch the ground, press your legs down and like just to see, can you actually let your lift your hand off of the mat, like actually lift your whole torso up just a little bit from the leg strength. It's kind of like doing this. Like if you're down and I'm pushed through my legs to be able to lift. See, that's the kind of tone I need in the legs. So when you come down here, you make sure you're not letting go too much. Stretch the legs, lean back and open. Let's go to half moon pose, step forward, come on up. So right hand for active and strong, reach back through that heel. And the same idea here, push down to take your hand off the floor, like that harder thing. The way you do it is by literally pushing down through your leg more. It's not just by yanking your hand off. I mean, that is not as effective. But if you push down and you actually get your torso to lift, I mean, then it's not super hard to do that. Hands to the mat, standing splits. Just take a breath or two here. And then step all the way back. Walk your hands right in line with your front foot and then twist, take the right arm up to the sky. Yeah, good. We'll mirror you. Bottom shoulder back, top shoulder back. Then lower your back knee to the floor. Keep lunging forward. Try to sit deeper into the lunge as you maintain the twist. And then hands to the floor. Make your way back to downward dog and through a vinyasa if you want. Good. And then from down dog, take your left leg to the sky. Step forward into warrior two. Do the same thing. Set up, get your width, get that established, then straighten the front leg a little bit so that you just make it easier to anchor down, wake up and fire up the back leg. Then the, then the action is if the feet are steady, I'm just trying to kind of slide into the front leg as easily as I can. Like with as little, you know, like trying to make it hard in the front leg, try to make it hard in the back leg and then arms up warrior two pose. <laughs> they look great guys, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, keep the little toe side of the foot, back foot, anchored down and lean back. Left arm to the sky, reverse warrior. Stretch down through the legs. Fill up through the spine as you reach back. Nice, and then back to warrior two. Interlace your hands behind you keeping your shoulders moving onto your back, bow forward. And you can take the arms over. Like this, this really doesn't work well if you're not invested in paying attention to it. Like, or it works less well. So it really is like, if you learn to like, can you hold that, that effort in the back leg and little by little let some out of the front leg. You can work deeper in there, you know, moving slow because all those little detail, all that little refinement can change the way this feels. Nice. And then lift your chest, come back up, warrior two. Straighten your front leg, pull the knee back, pull the hip tight, and then down, triangle pose. So this type of thing. 
Make sure that your legs are strong with that little you know, deficit lift where you're low and you push down through the legs and you try to get your spine to come up a little bit. And that can be really helpful to feel this in your body. And you can do this, you can check it in every pose. Like, are you that stable? Is it a major change if you want it to like rise back up out of this? Good. All right, look down, go to half moon. So stepping forward into the left leg, pushing and reaching out through the legs. Yeah, you're welcome to try to pull the hand off the floor, but think your torso is gonna lift a smidge as you do that. Lever it through your legs if you're trying that one. You got it, Mira, yeah. And then bring the hands to the floor, standing splits. Good, and then reach that leg. With your hands by your front foot, take the left arm up and twist. Yeah, lean back, broaden through your chest, through your collarbones. Make that you know, as wide, as spacious as you can. Then lower your back knee down. Continue to lunge forward and hold, keep the twist going. So you're trying to really stretch heavier into the back leg. Maybe you even feel some of that hip extension in the back leg. Good. Hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Take a moment. If you want to do a vinyasa, if you want to do child's pose, whatever feels good right now. Nice. Awesome. All right, bend the knees, walk or jump to the front of your mat. And then fold down from there. You can wrap hands to elbows, you can take it a little deeper. And then hands to hips and come up to stand. All right, so let's turn and face the left and take a wide stance. So I'm gonna show camera, watch toes point forward. So you can, you know, people tell you sometimes turn your toes in a little, that makes it easier. You can do that, but you guys probably don't need to do that. Take, make your legs really strong. We're gonna do this in little little approximation. So if you need to bend your knees, if your knees start to wobble, you can do that. Eventually you want to be able to hold tighter on the quad so the knee is strong. You're going to bow forward, swing your hips back a little bit, and then hover at about 90 degrees. Try to reach your chest forward as you do. The hands can be close to your body to make it easier. They can be further away or over your head to make it harder. Lift your chest, come back up. And then here's the deal. If you tre check your hips, you want your spine steady. So if you when you bow, as you come up, lift your chest, let your hips just follow. Meaning don't like scoop your butt under to get you out of there. Here, back to here. And you can even go below parallel if you want. But the hips won't move until... The hips only move when you're above parallel. Once you're below that, it should just be spine. It's just rounding of the spine. It's kind of fun, like as though it's a bunch of different movements that uh, honestly, probably don't even think of. We us I usually tell you, take your legs apart, walk, bow forward. We see it's like hip hinge till 90 degrees and then it's spinal flexion. 
So it's really two different pieces of the spine and hips. When you do, if you do a few of those, or take your hands to the floor, walk your arms over to your right leg and twist. Top of the thighs, always push back, tail tries to lift up. And you can twist, you can try to rotate. There's two movements, right? Side bend is what gets you over close to the right leg. Then think about rotating your torso so you're opening up to the front of the room. Yeah, great. And then come back down, go to the other way, other leg. So it's like a side bend to the left leg. Then it's a big twist as you open up. Nice. Very nice. Okay, back to center. Walk your hands to the front of your mat, downward facing dog, step back. Lift your shoulder. Yeah, lift up. It. Then keep that as you push the mat away and stretch your hips back more. Good. Turn onto the right hand and the outer edge of your right foot so you're in Vashistasana. Whatever leg position, you can lower your bottom knee down, you can stay up. You can use a foot in front or behind. So trying to lift your hips and to get your hips more over your back foot, if you can think of that. Nice. And then go back through to down dog onto the left side. Looks good, John. Looks super good. Left hand, outer edge of your left foot. So really, I mean, you can't lift your hips too much. You'll find like it gets easier if you are able to do that. If you can get the whole left foot on the floor, the sole of the foot, your balance improves. They look great, guys. Awesome. And then back through to downward dog. Good. And then walk your, or just come down to a squatting shape. You can squat into this. So from here, hook your elbows. If you're here, move them up or try to sit down, but hook your arms in front of your knees. You can be kind of more on the top if you're tighter here, like you could do it like this, but then you're trying to use your arms to pull back against your legs and then resist with your legs and push your legs forward. Knees into arms, arms back into knees. Try to lift your chest taller. Because like that, that, that kind of little fight, that little you know, battle between your arms and your knees is an important part of doing crow pose. So for crow pose today, you'll place your hands, you'll try to lift your hips a little, and then, you know, especially this is great if you're new to this, tippy toes, you rock forward, look forward until your elbows get over your wrists, and then you can float out of that, and it's learning just even to hold actively here. When that feels doable, you can do it with one leg. You go forward and you pull a foot off. When, when that feels easy, both leg feet can lift. But that movement in and out of the pose, trying to get the elbow and feeling like you are strong there, that's, the, that's one of the prerequisites. And like notice, I know like a lot of us will try to contract every muscle if it's hard and your face is tight. The more you do this, the, the more, it's, it's strength, but it's also nervous system. It's like this neurologic thing of like teaching your body how to contract more parts of you. And that's where the lightness in this eventually comes from. I was teaching this weekend like a push-up, which like you can teach a push-up to like all levels. You can make a push-up so hard 
And you can, you can also make a push-up very easy just by changing the way we're loading it. So kind of think about, you know, I'm like, for harder skills, you're trying to find ways to make it more challenging and build slowly from there. There's something very like interesting about discomfort when poses are hard. Some good stuff happens. Cool. All right, back to downward dog when you're finished working that. Take your right leg up to the sky. Pigeon pose, bring the knee forward. And then once you're in pigeon, walk your hands back. Try to sit up a little bit taller. Use your back knee to drag it forward so you lift even taller. We're going to twist and take a thigh stretch, so reach back with your left hand. So I, I should say we're looking to the left to grab the back foot. We're not really twisting. Once you have the foot, you can start to pull that in. And it's fine. To make it easier, you bow more forward. You kind of lean forward, but put more of your weight on the outer edge of that back. And even take the foot and push it a little more to the left to help square your hips. And you can try to sit up taller, try to get more of the, the control in your legs. Good. Let go of the foot, fold forward. You can go elbows, you can go straight arms. And the front thigh, you can press it down into the ground. Again, something I never thought about doing or learning how the control of these positions and the muscles involved in them. Honestly, a lot of the way I teach is from trying things, like playing around and obviously trying to figure out like when you learn something in another modality to try to take it back into something else and unravel it and make sense of it. It's especially important when you get conflicting information or of which I've had lots. So from there, walk your hands to the right leg or over to the right a little bit more. And literally, you're just going to lay down and put some weight on the right thigh. You can just kind of like lay on top of your hip bone or your thigh bone there. Just let your body weight compress. And then walk your hands the other way to the left, keeping your right hand. Twist your chest to the left, trying to keep your hips squared to the mat. So your outer left hip wants to roll open. Try to spin that hip down square. Use your ab muscles, your belly, to pull back and to rotate. Good. And then back to center and back to downward dog. Nice job. And then take your left leg up. Step it into half moon pose, or a half moon pose, pigeon pose. Kind of like a crescent moon, I guess. Nope, not at all. Pull your legs together, see if you can come up taller, and then when you're ready, take that thigh stretch, right hand, right foot. So you're trying to spin the foot out as you bring it in. It's just gonna help you square things up. It's gonna help you track your knee better. First time I saw that, or kind of, it, it seemed like that can't be right. 
It's amazing though, because it re it really just like it line it squares the knee joint as you you bend it deeper. Because we don't realize sometimes that our hips are a little askew when we're trying to crank back that leg in deeper. Give it one more breath. Try to sit tall. Awesome. And then let go of the foot. Fold forward onto your arms. And as you sit heavier into the pose, you can start working your back knee a little bit further back. And like send your breath into those tighter spots. Walk your hands now to the left. So you're going to lay down and add some weight to the left thigh. And then the other way, to the right. Keeping your left forearm down on the mat and push down with the arm as you rotate and twist. I mean, you could take the arm up to the sky, but I don't know, for me, it's, it's like if I keep my hand on the floor, I can do more of a twist and I can keep my hips a little more square, but you can play around. You know, the idea is the spine is the part that's twisting. The hips are not. Those look good. It's like cheating with you guys. You're, you've got this. And then back to center and back to down dog. Nice. And then walk your feet all the way back to the front of your mat. One more forward fold. Bend your knees so you can lay on your back. So feet on the floor, close to your hips, nice hip distance stance with your feet. And then, yeah, what I often do and without even thinking about it is like start wiggling your knees side to side and use that to dig your shoulder blades underneath your back. The shoulder blades do move a little together, but you're trying to really pin them onto your back with that activation in those shoulder muscles and the muscles that, that kind of squeeze the shoulder blade into the rib cage there. Push, press the arms down, press the head down, puff the chest up, then lift the hips up. And even while you're up there, you might be able to wiggle a little and work your shoulders underneath you even more. If the arms are heavy, so triceps are firing, neck muscles are firing by the way you press your head down, you can try karate chopping the mat. Take your pinky fingers down to the ground. Press down so much with the arms, the chest lifts. Keep that pressure down and shorten your arms. You're pulling from your fingers back into the shoulder joint. Good, and then butt to the floor to rest. You can windshield wiper between. So that shape, you can do the same one again. You can take that further going into wheel pose, Urdhva Dhanurasana. The important part is the spine. It's like keeping the, the chest open, not letting the mid-chest kind of sag. 
if you're going, whatever version you're going for. So once your hips are up, if you're going further, place your hands outside of your ears. Wider, generally better, easier, and further back behind your ears is going to be helpful too. As you do start to take your chest through more, the external rotation in the arms is extra important. So you're trying to kind of spin the part of the shoulder closer to your ears back. Your elbows will spin, how do you think that, towards your fingertips? It's so tricky, to, it's so tricky because if I say forward and back, that's just confusing because it depends on the position you're in. You know how much time I spent like really like putting it into my brain, even what internal and external rotation in the arms looks like? Because it's tricky when your arms are overhead. I don't know if you've ever thought of this. It's, it's different or it feels different. It's always the same direction, but, but that's kind of, our shoulder joint is such a crazy joint because we have all this wild ability to move it. So yeah, you take your arms overhead and it's every, you see a lot of people get confused. All right, you can go one more, one more back bend if you want it. Turning your fingers out a little bit helps that rotation I'm talking about. Like that kind of, you know, don't go crazy doing that, but that's a little bit of a reminder to, to help the shoulders, the arm bones externally rotate. Shoulder blades will move away from the midline when that happens, away from each other. It's great. Awesome. So when you come on down, take your time though. You can take your feet a little bit wider, roll the knees to the right, and then put your right foot on your left knee. If you're able to, lift your right knee up, and you can even grab the leg and help with your hand a little bit. I wouldn't do it all with your hand. like. Your leg's probably heavy enough that it's not nice to do that anyway. But yeah, lift the knee higher, and then you might even get a little stretch on like the outer right hip muscles. So you can kind of like massage that. But the more the knee lifts, the right knee lifts, it's easier to get the left knee down without twisting or torquing the knee. And then switch sides, feet wide again, knees to the left, left foot on the right outer thigh there, outer knee. Again, you can lift your knee up, your left knee goes up, and you can give a little bit more downward pressure on that right thigh. If you do feel, you know, when you lift the knee, you, you're exposing some of the outer hip external rotators in your hip, so you may feel like some soreness there. It's a good spot. You can just do a little myofascial release. Fancy way of mas saying massage sore muscles. Very nice, and then come back up to center. Oh. Let's come all the way to a seated position. Oh. 
taking your right leg straight out and then bending your left knee back, Janu Shashasana. Now, you're going to make it harder the wider you go, so, you know, decide. But two things here. First thing, sit up tall, twist, and face the right leg. And that should feel like a good amount of twist. Now, as you fold forward, you got to keep twisting. So keep the, that twist in vertical, and then go a little bit into the forward fold and rotate more. A little bit further forward, twist more. Again, it's the lateral thing, right? So you have this, le this side bend to get you over the right leg, but then you can do a lot more rotating through the rib cage. Like really imagine if I grabbed both, like the both sides of those bottom ribs and we're turning the rib cage towards the leg you're, you're bowing over. Your ab muscles will engage. They should. This is something, you know, I didn't get, the, you know, like doing forward fold practices and coming out of them and your core muscles be exhausted. It took me a few years to realize that. Or to, you know, just to be able to get in there in that way. It's great. And then come all the way back up, switch the legs. What it should do if you get all that twist is it, it really changes what you're asking out of your back muscles, like in terms of stretching through the low back. I don't know, it always feels really nice to me. So you face the straight leg, like even take your time there to sit up to make sure you really are able to sit up tall. And to twist, your core should already have to be turned on. And then as you fold, you're just turning more and more. So the left side of your belly draws back, it draws away from the leg, and you're trying to wrap the right side into that space. Very nice. All right, come up. One more seated pose. So easiest way to do this. And you can prop up if you need something. So you're going to take your left leg and put it in like a art of your asana. So the left knee is facing the side of the room, the left side of the room. Then the, the other leg straight out. So if a block under your right thigh would be the place to do it. And you want this 90 degree bend. So then if you come up a little bit, so you can take your butt back and then you try to sit down into that. That may keep you busy for some time, I know. So now here's the pose. From there, you side bend down onto your shoulder and reach the other arm over your head. If you want the fancy thing, you can even take your hand and you grab your ankle and then you twist. But that really doesn't do a whole lot. <laughs> this is one of those few twists that tips you into the twist. So it's actually easier if your knee will tolerate this than the Janusharshasana leg position we just did in this Pavrita twist version. Yeah, push the legs down to get, to get that, that space in the spine, that, that tone in the spine. Good. Nice. And then fold to come up and switch your legs. Take your time to switch it, switch it over. I find it's, it's easier to put the right leg in first and then straighten your left leg. So if you come up a little, this is just to help. So a lot of times, like when you sit down, if you're like me, the, that straight leg is rocked way out. That's a normal, you know, m misalignment that happens. So if you come up, you try to scoot your butt back and lower down. The problem with not having blocks, I do this at home and I stick a 
towel under, or like a blanket under my left thigh. And then down on the left side. And open. Awesome. And then come all the way back up. Take swing your legs out. You're just going to loosen up the hips for a second. You can do a few just little windshield wipers in and out of this. And then stretch the legs out and lay on your back. Bring the right knee in, hold the back side of your leg. So without over-forcing this, pull your toes back a little bit so you're flexing your foot, and then straighten your leg as much as it'll go within reason. I mean, you can go a little into the tension, but just do a few little bends and extends. Think where it, you know, as you straighten it out, think that's where you want the exhale. That's where you want that good signal to try not to over tense up. Or don't add, you know, more contraction than is already going to be there in the stretch. Once you've done a few and you feel good, try to hold the leg straight. You could try to pull the leg in a little closer to you, all of which makes this more intense. Good, and then take the leg across your body so we're twisting. If you're holding, you just switch hands. The left hand can hold the right arm, reaches out to help bring you back to the floor. If you take, you want your chest to stay more lifted so you're keeping some spinal extension. If you take your right hand and you kind of find, you know, your mid kind of spine, like basically if you slide your hand through the channel between like where your spine actually is and you feel those little bumps which are the spinous process you want to try to get all of those in so there's really no bump that is protruding more than any other part of the spine and it probably happens in that you know that low thoracic upper lumbar is usually where T12 wants to stick out T12 L1 that joint Good, and then come back up. Release the leg to the floor and give it a little shake. And then left leg up, hold the back of your left leg with both hands. From there, pull the toes back, keep some action in your foot and press the heel towards straight. Bend a little. You don't have to bend much. You're just trying to put it on tension, take it off tension, put it on tension. So like that burning that you may feel around the, the connective tissue in your knee, you know, this is, you know, it's not all muscle that is restricting us in this. Once you've gotten in there, hold the leg straight, you can push away with your leg and you can even pull the leg in a bit closer. One of my not so good habits is like I'll clench my teeth almost not even noticing it. So like the, that's one of those like relax spots that really helps me feel a lot better if I just think of that. Take the leg across your body, 
twist. And I know it's nice to get the adjustments when I would come over and do that, but in the current climate, at least we can try to give you some insight into aligning your own body. Again, the left arm, you can just feel down your spine. You should have this trench. The, in the low back, the erector muscles, erector spinae, are, should be pretty prominent. You should be able to feel those. And then as you move up, they're covered by different muscles. But yeah, you're just looking for the bones that you feel underneath that. When the spine extends evenly, you, you, those bones get pulled back in. And then good, bring the knees back to center. Give your legs a hug. And happy baby, from there reach up, grab your feet. So pull the knees down a little bit, like if you're trying to take them to the floor, hold that, like hold the position of where your feet and your knees are, try to push your butt to the floor a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, there might be a little movement, but you, you know, you get the idea. You're trying to descend, go deeper in one spot, then add the other piece, and you should feel, you know, the increase of the stretch. Don't try to max this out. Don't try to, like, force it. But anything that feels good, you can rock massaging your low back. You can move the legs and the hips around to kind of stir things in the hips. And then any other little stretch that feels good here, make your way to Shavasana when you're ready to, when you're done with any stretching. Or seated meditation is always great too. And yeah, just taking your time to, to also, when you do set up for Shavasana, that you're setting it up carefully. Same thing in, a, in meditation seats. It's like you want your posture, I think, is important.
and start to deepen your breath. Moving slowly at first, but then any way that feels good. Take your time to explore those sensations. And slowly finding your way back up to a seated position. Sitting up, taking a few breaths, taking note of how you feel. It's less about judging practice. It's more about acknowledging what you learn, what you've felt. Because again, it's not what to think, but if yoga teaches you how to think, different ways to think, to me, that, that's really the gift. That's really the point. That this is your practice. This is your time to go inside, to learn about yourself, to, to refine yourself. So we hold ourselves in the highest, in our absolute best, when we step off of the mat, when we engage the world. And at least that's the hope. And I know it's always a practice. It's nice to have that space to come back to that's always there for you to explore, to do the work. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. And very gratefully, a big breath. And you can bow. Namaste.